Hey, thank you for joining me today. My name is Leila Ataya and today I will show you how to create a beautiful sketch of a red rose in mixed media style. As always, I would like to encourage you to follow along to this video or you can always sit back, relax and enjoy. You guys keep writing to me that you love, you know, the more relaxing videos, the ones that help you relax and unwind after a busy day. So I try to make them as relaxing as I can while still making sure that you get the tips and tricks and the full process as well. So I hope you enjoy this one. Now, if you do decide to follow along, these are the materials that you might need. A piece of paper, some watercolor paint, watercolor pencils, some brushes, and the usual stuff. Water, some tissues for wiping your brushes. If you don't have some of these materials, like for example, maybe you don't have watercolor pencils, then you can use regular color pencils instead. If you don't have either one of those, you can always use watercolor all the way through. And if you would like to find out more about materials, I will leave the links under the video description. Okay, let's start. To start with, I will use a regular graphite pencil to sketch things out. So the first thing I want to do is to sketch an overall shape for this rose, an oval, because it's an elongated sort of a bud type of a rose. Next I'm going to mark some of the larger petals and their shape. And then I'm going to carve out the appropriate form. So here we have one petal. I apologize if you guys can't see this really clearly, but I will add this image onto my Patreon page. So if you're my patron, you can you'll be able to see that much clearer over there. And then this other part is where the leaf turns over. Here I have another petal. And another petal that curls over. And as you're structuring, you will find that there are some lines that you might not need, so you can get rid of them straight away. So I've got an overall shape, now I'm just going to remove everything that's left over from me structuring it. And now I'm just going to go over and add anything that I might want to add or correct, like this petal that I've started with. Now, let's start with watercolor. If you don't have watercolor paint, you can use your watercolor pencils to achieve similar uh, results, but uh, you would need to change the technique a little bit. First, I'm going to apply water to some of the petals. And because this rose is white going into red, I'm going to grab some red. And I'm going to go for scarlet red with a little bit of open rosa combined to make it red but rose red if you know what I mean. And now I'm going to just let it run so the outside edge should be quite sharp 
while everything else can have this beautiful bleed. Same thing on this side. Very sharp outer edge. Now if you are doing this with watercolor pencils, you might find that it's going to take you a bit longer to achieve this result. Nonetheless, you can still do it and still achieve it. Now I'm going to go for the other petals and do the same thing. These areas are red all the way through, so I'm going to paint them pink for now. So as you can see, that we've already mapped out the colors for the rose. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to intensify some of the areas, and also I will add a little bit of other shades in as well. And I will show you what I mean. I'm just going to add some water on this, because this is... It's not fully dry, but it's already sort of a setting. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, a little bit of this brownish sort of a shade. Make sure that I have only a little bit of it on my brush. And just add a little bit of it. Because you see, even though we see the rose as white, but it's not actually fully white. It has shadows, it has a little bit of greens and yellows in there, you know, because it's an organic... Um, object, so we get all sorts of different shade variations and things like that. And just make it a little bit lighter by sucking up the paint and water. I'm also going to add just a tiny little bit of green gold mixed up with just a tiny bit of and green. While this is all still quite wet, I'll just add a little bit of a, just as a color definition. Also having a little bit of green there will make the red really pop up as well. Okay, so while all the green parts, or sort of a creamy green parts, are drying, um, I can work again on the red because now the red is dry. So again, I'm going to mix the exactly same color, the scarlet red and the open rosa. And I'm going to go over the edges again. And this time if I need to be a little bit more precise, I can be as well. But I might still like to have some areas kind of bleed Even though this is a much more intense color, it's still not a really dark one. Because it, in this rose, this red really does go into a really dark shade in some areas. So at this stage it's still a reasonably light pink. I think it's like some spots that are just happening on the rocks. At this stage, if you see patterns that are happening, you can put those in. Like for example, what I'm doing here. But you don't have to. You can do this a little bit later. It's one of those things where it might help you to see where you're going with this. But we will be doing more details later on with pencils. Although you can carry on with watercolor. As I said in the beginning of the video, you can 
just completely fully complete this artwork and watercolor as well at the moment we're not really creating any shadows so the colors kind of look very bright but also very flat which is absolutely fine at this stage Okay, so while this is drying, I'm going to work on the bottom part of the rose. For that, I'll just grab some green. A bit of ochre's green, yellow ochre. And do an underpainting. A little bit of darker green we can also add a bit of red as well in there now I'm going to leave this to dry and then carry on with watercolor pencils if you are enjoying this video remember to check out my patreon page because for just two dollars a month you can support this channel and get some useful tips and starting from eight dollars a month you will get access to all of the extra videos the long tutorials the in-depth explanations and so on so don't forget to check that out and find something very useful for yourself over there okay so now that this is dry i'm going to go for light ochre colored pencil and I'm going to start creating the beautiful texture that rose petals have Also go for the light green color so this one's actually called light green to just follow up with some of these lines to create that freshness next I'm gonna go for pale geranium shade same on the other petals as well you could do this with watercolor as well and using you know a smaller brush and I do like to create that effect with watercolor too but I just think that with the pencils it's a little bit quicker and also because this is a follow along tutorial um, it's a little bit easier for those people that still haven't acquired a very good control over the, you know, small brushes. Okay, and now going back to here. Just creating that blend of colors okay next I'm gonna go for the darker pencil so this one's a uh, deep scarlet red 
and do a very similar thing to what I did before, just keeping those lines a little bit closer to the edge of the row. you can see how the color becomes much more intense before I start looking at shadows and things like that I am going to go for even a darker shade and introduce that because some of that color can also play in as a shadow see here I'm actually creating a shadow with that color There's a very dark edge on this side here. Okay, now I'm going to start working on some of the shadows and introducing some other colors in as well. So I will start with a little bit of this light cobalt turquoise. Now, I know you would say, this is a strange color, it's blue, there's no blue in this sort of white and red rose, but there is a little bit in the shadows. So, to create soft shadows, I can use this shade. And create this natural sort of almost greeny shadow-like effect with this use. I can do the same thing here and here same on this petal so you see how instantly it freshened it up rather than making it very dark and very heavy so this is a very good tip guys remember this if you want to create very light very airy shadows and give more of the 3d look without weighing things down go for really light blues next just a little bit of the darker color in the same range just a little bit on the bottom and now going back for the lighter one gonna go for a, a lighter pink color to help create that color in the middle Now I'm going to go for the white and the white will also help me to merge these colors together The white pencil has this tendency not necessarily um, depositing a lot of opaque and non-transparent white shade but it's more for blending and bringing things together uh, especially if you want to make things just tiny a little bit lighter and milkier as well so you can see how just by adding a little bit of it over the reds the watercolor and the 
the red pencils we can create this really nice effect okay now we also need to start looking at some of the patterns that are happening on these petals that are rolling over and the pencil is perfect for that too this for now and I'm going to go back and work on the green part of the stem so here go for light yellow green a little bit of red in the greens very common with red roses and now to create a bit more shadow I'm gonna go for the dark purple which is mauve and now we can take some of this purple through the rose as well again over some of these shadows Same on the other side too. It's quite a shadow on the other side, so I'll put that in. And you see how this color, because purple is so closely related to red, it's a perfect color to do all of these really dark red bits as well. For some strange reason my camera has cut out, I don't even understand why seems to be full everything but I have missed out on filming a little bit of the highlights which is an optional thing to do anyway but I've got some gouache paint and I have just been using it straight from the tube and applying these little highlights so I will show you guys again what I've been doing just so that you don't miss out on the process and so just applying some little highlights on some of the areas where the light really hits it and you can really see the texture it's perfect for things like super realism and highly detailed things you know like hyper um, realism and things like that so if you want to if you want to achieve and create that sort of a look then this will definitely be your friend. You have to remember that you'd need a small um, round brush for this technique as well. So I'll just place some through here too. Now if you do want something that's even more opaque, if uh, gouache paint is not opaque enough for you guys, then remember you can always just use Acrylics, especially um, artist grade, are just you know a bit stronger, and so you'll be able to really block some of the areas. And that is, if that's what you're after, 
but with these artworks uh, gouache is definitely opaque enough just a few more through here hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got some knowledge from it or at least you got to relax and unwind if you have don't forget to subscribe and press that notification bell because I've got so many more exciting things coming up soon for you guys I would also like to take this chance to say a big big thank you to all of my wonderful wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel as without their help some of these videos would not be possible and remember if you've got any questions anything that interests you or anything at all always feel free to leave a comment under the video i try to answer all the comments that i see so hopefully i'll be able to help you out Thank you so much for drawing with me and I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely day.